Hi, this is Mike Richmond. It's time for another mini lesson in biostatistics. This is a mini lesson particularly for the students in Math 221B Biostatistics. This mini lesson is about alpha, beta, type 1 and type 2 errors, and whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. A common mnemonic device that is used when referring to these things is art bath. So if you were to write art bath vertically on your page, and I like to uh, separate these with a big fat blue line in the middle, but art stands for alpha reject true. So alpha is the probability that I would reject a true null hypothesis. On the other hand, beta is the probability that I would accept a false null hypothesis. Now, I put in the word accept in parentheses because we really don't ever accept the uh, null hypothesis. We either reject it or we fail to reject it. Fail to reject and accept are similar things. They're not exactly the same, but I'm going to skip the minutia of that for the time being. Like I said before, I like to separate these with a blue line because I want to keep these two distinct and different. So, alpha reject true. Alpha is the probability that I would reject a true null hypothesis is usually identified by the Greek letter alpha and then beta being the probability that I would accept, quote-unquote, a false null hypothesis is represented by the Greek letter beta, the capital beta. Just to remind you, the, the probability of rejecting a true, uh, I'm sorry, rejecting a true null hypothesis is a type 1 error, whereas accepting or failing to reject a false null hypothesis is a type 2 error. Now we don't talk a lot about beta in this class and we don't use any of it use it in any of our calculations at all but it's helpful to know when you're looking at the art bath mnemonic device. One more thing I want to talk about is if p value is less than alpha then I'm going to reject h not or the null hypothesis. This is the same thing as saying I have enough evidence to say the null is not true or the evidence is sufficient to show that this is different from that this and that being part of the null hypothesis verbiage, of course. On the other hand, if p-value is greater than alpha, then I fail to reject the null hypothesis, or h not. In other words, I don't have enough evidence to say the null is not true, or the evidence is insufficient to show that this is different from that. I guess the most important thing to remember about the p-value and alpha is that if the p is low, reject the null, and that's a good mnemonic device also. This has been a very brief discussion of type 1 and type 2 errors and alpha and beta. Thanks for watching.